I need to say I got some sun out there too. I know what day it is. It's Father's Day, June 17th. And uh, that was my son. Now, you know that there's another young in my life too. We're going to reach out to the senior young, uh, my dad, David Young, who was a minor league baseball coach for me back in the day, uh, and then became one of the biggest fans in the stands through my career, as you are going through your career now. Um, any added pressure when uh, mom and dad are in the stands when you're playing? Or do you like that? I don't know. I kind of, I don't know. I mean, I do a lot of school sports now, um, track and cross country. They've only been to, they've only been to one track meet, uh, no cross country meet. So, I mean, I don't know. You just got to go out there, do your race. Um, and not worry about right, who's not, watching? Not worry about them. Okay. I, I know one memory that I have <clears throat> My dad showed up at a game, and I got nipped at first base. I, I didn't beat out a ball that I should have beaten out, and an expletive came out. And it was probably the first time I expletive in front of my dad at age 12. I was a little embarrassed by that uh, lack of control. But then again, what did we learn about sports? You learn from your mistakes, right, Chase? Yep. So that's what we did. Are we trying to get uh, David Young on the phone? Oh, here we go. This ought to be fun. Let's see what happens. You never know in the household. You can introduce. You can say hi. Introduce who you are. Of course, if nature called, he may not pick up. <laughs> Which is probably... Hello. What... Oh, there he is. Hi, Mr. Young. Uh, how are you doing? Who is this? This is Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. That's it. Jason's in studio with me, Dad. How are you? I'm okay. Good. So Jason's got a few questions he'd like to ask you because we recognize that uh, on Father's Day you might have a little bit different perspective on the day and uh, your memories of sports and what role they've played in not only your life but in the life of myself and us as fans. So Jason's got a few here. Go ahead, Jason. Well, first of all, happy Father's Day, Mr. Young. So, Thank you very much. You're welcome. So has a sports moment ever changed your life? How did a sports change my life? Has, has a sports moment ever changed your life? No, I don't think a sports moment has ever changed my life. I just, uh, just a second here, let me do something. Uh, <laughs> He's going to turn down the TV. Yeah, I turned it off. Anyway, so we anyway, gotta, we gave ask you another one. Ask ask this question. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Okay. I've enjoyed sports all my life, all of them, and I I love the competition that's involved. Uh, only many times I'm not happy with the outcome, but that's another story. And uh, uh, I think sports is a very important element of American life, and it's, it's, it helps uh, children learn how to play with others and how to uh, work with others, and, and uh, especially team sports. It's, 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 a, it's a wonderful thing to do. There you go. All right, Jason. All right. Wait, we got, we got a couple more for you. So, what is the most courageous performance you have seen in sports? Well, I think one of them was uh, uh, the World the World Series game with with Kurt Schilling, where he when he pitched with that uh, red sock. With the uh, the bloody, I, bloody sock was game five of the ALCS in two thousand and four. But you're right, Dad. Against the Yankees, it felt like the World Series. Hey, whenever you ought to get to the Yankees, it feels like the World Series. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, Dad, you and I talked about this before. Um, the greatest athlete you ever saw, and you, you had a great uh, anecdote, a little story about an athlete that I'm going to guess that Jason uh, has never heard of, and it's from that area of Lynn, Massachusetts. And uh, I know you, you know who I'm going about, and I want you to talk about this moment, but Jason, you just read a book about another great athlete from Lynn, Tony Canigliaro. And he just read the uh, biography of Tony Canigliaro by Mark Fitzpatrick. But Dad, tell me 
Who is the greatest athlete you ever saw, perhaps live even? Besides well, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think uh, of course, you, you, you have to understand, I, I've watched baseball since, since the days of Babe Ruth. And I've seen quite a few wonderful, great ball players. But, but I think if you really went back and you analyze it, I think one of the greatest athletes I ever saw was a gentleman from Lynn English. Not Lynn, I'm sorry, Lynn Classical. His name was Harry Agannis. They called him the Golden Greek. He was a baseball player, a basketball player, and uh, a football player. And he ended up playing first base for the Boston Red Sox. Unfortunately, he, he got pneumonia and died. And it was, it was a very, I think he was 25 years old. But one of the greatest things that I can remember in sports was a football game on Thanksgiving between Lynn Classical and Lynn English. High school football game. And Harry Gannis was the quarterback for Lynn Classical, and Bobby Whalen was the quarterback for Lynn English. And Bobby Whalen's father was the coach for Lynn English. And I can remember that game. It was on Thanksgiving Day, and it was it's it was just a wonderful game it it went back and forth and back and forth <clears throat> and whenever classical get the ball they score whenever english get the ball they score and the the final thing was they ended up a 28 to 28 tie and and, was, yep. and, and, and harry again is, uh, i mean he whatever he did he stole the show he could he could pass he could run he could kick he was a punter at the, at the for class and it, and it was just wonderful and Bobby Whelan of course was the underdog and uh, uh, he held his own on that game but it's just it was it's it's very vivid in my memory as to how that game came over. Yeah, and actually there's another famous 28-28 tie in college football. Harvard and Yale played in 1968 in what is known as the game. And yeah. a lot of people talk about uh, that being uh, a Harvard win because they came back to tie in the final seconds. And I believe Vic Gatto was involved with that, uh, the former uh, coach at Tufts University, our uh, alma mater, Dad. One right. thing I do want to ask you about is what, because you and I both shared this. You coached me as a kid, and I coached Gabe as a kid. And that, that unto itself is a challenge, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sure is. And it's always a challenge when you coach your, you, you, when you're coaching your own uh, offspring. Because you uh, want to treat them like every other kid, and yeah. you'd kind of hope that they'd act like every other kid, but that doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> you know that better than I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer a question that's also here. The sports moment that moved me emotionally, and it involved the guy that's on the phone, Jason. And you and I were talking about this earlier, and your dad, I think, will remember the 1975 World Series. And we were fortunate enough to go to games one, six, and seven of that World Series. Obviously, the Red Sox fans and Red Sox Nation would have liked to have had the, a little bit better result in Game 7, but that was part of the deal. And in Game 6, when Carlton Fisk hit that famous walk-off home run that hit the foul pole, and Bernie Carbo, everybody forgets about the pinch hit three-run home run, which I called. I don't know if Dad will remember that, but I, I remember that I called that home run. And... Um, you and I jumped up and down, and we hugged. It's like 18. I was a freshman at Tufts University, and I don't know how old you were there, but probably maybe even around my age now. And it was just a great moment, uh, perhaps one of the most famous moments of all time in baseball. And, um, Dad, when you think about all those great moments that you've seen, and you see that home run over and over and over again, don't you just <laughs> shake your head and say, I can't believe we were there. That's right. That's right. 
But I'll tell you another. I'll tell you another story that maybe you don't know. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh, I was at a game, a football game in Giant Stadium in, in Yankee Stadium when the uh, New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns played with uh, what's his name then? Jim Brown, Charlie Connolly. Charlie Connolly. It was the quarterback for the Giants, and and uh, uh, the running back for the uh, uh, Cleveland. Jim uh, Brown. Jim Brown, right, right. And uh, the first thing that Jim Brown did, uh, the Giants kicked off to uh, the Browns, and on the first play from scrimmage, Jim Brown ran about sixty yards for a touchdown. And that's the way the that. game kept going and going and going. And finally, the, the, the Giants tied it up 7-7. Seven seven. And it started to snow. And at the last play of the game, the Giants were within field goal range. And Pat Summerall, the sports announcer, Remember. was the kicker for the New York Giants. And he kicked the field goal to win the game ten to seven, and uh, the Giants won the, uh, the the championship. I think that was, wasn't that the year that they they had the playoff with the the greatest uh, uh, Packers. That was turned out to be the greatest game they ever played. That game, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they that's what they talk about. And I'll tell you my story about Charlie Charlie Connolly. So my dad's at a show somewhere, and he brings me back this football that's autographed by Charlie Connolly. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. I didn't know who he was. Well, that's really a problem. It's like, hey, thanks, Dad, but who will autograph this? That's right. Who is Charlie Connolly? And you explained to me who it was, which was great. It was a learning experience and all that. Um, but it's the thought that counts, right? Yep. And uh, that's what dads are all about. And we might as well ask him, uh, what are your impressions of the Red Sox this year? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, this. Oh. All I know is if they would, if they could get healthy, if all of them could get healthy, it would be an entirely different game. Yeah, that, that's right. I, I, and then you know what, I, Carl Crawford might be back in the next week. They're talking. He threw from 110 feet the other day, and he's already ready to hit. So I think that you may see Carl Crawford back in the lineup, and and let's just hope he improves on his performance from last year. Well, listen, they they. With what they've done, it's remarkable. Uh, yep. With, with, the, with the players they have, it's remarkable. It's remarkable and, that they're still in last place. <laughs> well, you know, but how many games are they out? Four or five games? Right. It, it's, it's remarkable. It, all it takes is that if they win 10 straight, they'd be up in first place, the way, the way their teams are set up. There you go. Well, anyway, we all know it comes down to pitching. Uh, David Young, my dad, thank you so much for joining us on this Father's Day edition of K-Sports Sunday. Well, this has been a great season of uh, K-Sports Sunday, talking about from baseball to curling, which we're not even sure is a sport. But um, we certainly had a lot of fun. Thank you so much to everyone who has joined on the show. Thank you to everyone backstage, uh, behind the scenes. Zach and Barbara? Yep. There you go. Yep. So have a great summer, everyone. Have some fun in the sun, and we will see you in August. I'm Jason Siegel for YBA Sports. Happy Father's Day.